So welcome everybody to the Global Leadership Summit, the Sweet Spot Global Leadership Summit this year, where we're going to be talking with the amazing Sharna today. She's a manager within the federal government here in Canada and one of my great friends and also one of my wonderful clients as well. So I thought it would be really neat to hear from Sharna today on her perspective as a leader within the federal government and some of the challenges and kind of difficulties we've had as leaders the last few years within pandemic climate. And she's got some great strategies and suggestions on how to really increase your resilience and support a positive culture within your team despite the challenges lately. So Sharna, welcome, welcome, welcome. So great Thank to have you, you here. And I'm really excited to talk to you about this because I think so many people are still struggling with that stress response in themselves. And then of course, obviously the ripple effect on their team. So I'd love to talk to you about how uh, you found over the last couple of years, you know, your resilience, you've been able to increase that and how you've seen that impact your team in such a positive way. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for having me here, Sarah. It's really a pleasure to have this conversation with you. Um, I, I really noticed uh, early on in the pandemic when we started to have to pivot in so many different ways with our families and our work and home work uh, like um, back and forth that um, if, if I wasn't um, confident in my messages to the team or what I was saying, um, the conversations, anything that was negative um, in the office, then it, it would really have the ripple effect on the team. And I could see that, you know, if, if I wasn't positive about things that were happening, they weren't either. And I didn't want that to, um, um, you know, erode um, the team. It was a new team mm -hmm. as well. And I was, we were trying to really become connected. And so um, I, I learned through you that I had to make sure that I was taking care of myself first. And when I was um, healthy emotionally and, and physically, then I would be able to be there for my team. And, and so, um, you know, I have this great team now. We are all very connected, even though we're, we're not always in the office, we're working from home, but um, we have a really good communication system and we trust each other. And when mm. somebody can't do something, another person will step up and do it. And that's really important too. So um, I think trust, you know, um, developing that trust in your team, it takes time. But once you get there, it is really worth the effort to, to develop that within the team. Mm, well, I'd love to hear more about that trust piece, especially that you had a, a new team at the start of the pandemic and that you're build, able to build that trust during this kind of work from home, split up, all people all over the place kind of thing. So what do you feel helped create that trust? Were you deliberate in creating it or do you feel like it was an outcome of other things? Uh, yeah, where do you think that came from? Um, I think for me, I'm genuinely kind and concerned about the, the team, you know, and the people that I meet generally, whether they're my employees or my friends or my family. Um, you know, they're important to me. And I know that this has been really hard over the last years. It's been really hard for me too. And so um, I think through the trust, the how, you know, how I, um, I do what I say I'm going to do. So they always know that if I say this is, you know, how something is going to go down or this is what I'm going to relay to senior management, that is, and I, and I talk with them before I say, you know, if, if we have a situation where something needs to be communicated to the senior leaders, you know, we talk about it as a team, you know, what do I need to say? How is this impacting you? And they appreciate that. It's, you know, their, their, their voice is being heard. So that's an important part of it. And I, you know, like I said, so I do what I say um, mm -hmm. when we have those conversations and um, if they're unable to perform their duties in some way, then, you know, we, I will help out or another team member will help out. So they're not feeling pressure in the office when they come in and they talk to me and maybe they have a meltdown because something's just not going right. Um, that stays with me. That doesn't get communicated unless, of course, I'm worried about somebody and that has happened. And I, I did reach out to um senior leaders to say I'm worried about this individual so um but they were grateful that I did that because mm -hmm. they were at an end of a ropes kind of thing so does and that that's, answer that's the question challenge. Yeah, yeah well what yeah. I'm hearing is you know you have integrity and you're being consistent in in you know showing up as your genuine caring self for them mm -hmm. in this time and and what you haven't said but I, I imagine what you 
kind of leading alluding to was your resilience enabled you to be able to be that caring person for them because you had that capacity to kind of you know be present with them which I think is is huge yes yeah and, and you know um I have things going on in my life too and when I couldn't be there in a capacity at a level that I wanted to be for my team I took a day off mm. and regrouped or two or the weekend whatever it turned out to be and um you know reflected on on how I was feeling and why I was feeling that way and um getting back to where I needed to be in the office for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and I think that's so easy to overlook, right? Because we're, especially mm -hmm. if you're caring for your team, you've got all this work to do and still there's deadlines and pressure and change happening. Um, and then there's personal life stuff. And then there's a pandemic all thrown in there in the mix, right? Um, yeah. So that, that is such a good reminder to just take that breather and to, to pause and kind of you know take care of ourselves for a minute <laughs> so we can yeah. get back to that our strong selves again and and I, I imagine people listening to this will hopefully find that inspiring if they're needing to kind of just pause and kind of regroup a little bit so thank you for sharing that it's mm -hmm. important to to be able to hear that that's okay to mm -hmm. do that and helpful I think so yeah for me it was you know and and I'm really busy and they know that and I learned to um I always think if I if I take any time away from the work that I have to do that that work's not going to get done and I've I've learned through your coaching that that work will always be there but the team needs to know that they when when they need you that you are there for them as well um, however that looks so I've really practiced um, or made a conscious effort um, like we talked about in one of our sessions where in the morning I go around and I, you know, have a conversation with my team, you know, who was ever in the office that day and, you know, just a, a very casual conversation and, and we check in with each other and, and they do that with me as well. So, you know, that, that's how our um, um, relationships are developing through that. That's lovely because that, yeah. that regular touch point outside of the transactional work pieces, mm -hmm. you know, to start the day. And then, and like you said, you've been able to cultivate this safe space for people as well to come to you and share maybe beyond what work stuff, because we're, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're well-rounded humans. We're not just work robots. <laughs> uh, so to so be right. able to support people with that, uh, even like you said, there's one person that was at the kind of kind of the serious end of, of some serious things that needed support mm -hmm. uh, for you to be able to guide them and support them through that. That's huge. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think too, that if you start the day off like that, um, like you said, um, it's, it's a calmer beginning for them. So there's mm -hmm. less, there's, you know, they have less questions during the day for me, if they, you know, we have that quick conversation in the morning, you know, like a stand up or what do you got going on today? And do you need any help? And we sort of address it first thing. And then I can go off to my office and, you know, do my work. So it's helped in, in a couple of different ways for sure. Mm -hmm. well, I'm glad it's, it's worked for you. It was definitely mm -hmm. a, a transformational piece for me when I brought that in consistently instead of just going to my desk and getting stuff yeah. in work. And all of a sudden it's lunchtime and I haven't even said hi yet. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's not, yeah. that was not the kind of leader and, I wanted and it's to be. Very, sure. It's important yeah. to, to, you know, um, acknowledge and to be, you know, show gratitude and appreciation to your team. And I try to do that regularly. You know, even mm -hmm. if it's uh, just a comment or a piece of chocolate or a, hey, that was, you know, a great job. And thanks for doing that for me. I could have never done it. You know, um, like I said, they they thrive on that. And mm -hmm. um, so do I. I. I like to get a pat on the back and a kudos, too. So, yeah, it's it's um, it's been a pleasure working with this team that I have now. It's, it's just awesome. So it's really a nice. I'm coming to the end of my career in a couple of years. I think, you know, it's really been a pleasure working with this group. I've learned a lot. Yeah, it's been great. Well, and it sounds like you've been deliberate in creating that kind of environment of trust, like you're saying, where, you know, you all help each other out and, and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And, and I think that that is sort of, that is almost, it's taken your personal resilience and you've, you've embedded, I guess, what it sounds like to me is a team resilience. So if one of the team, team members is struggling a little bit or, or maybe they're sick or, or you know, they, they aren't able to meet a deadline, like you said, mm -hmm. the rest, everybody is, is helping each other. You're all moving in the same direction. And that, mm -hmm. that's a pretty impressive thing to be able to uh, 
work within, but also to kind of be able to cultivate that, that that's something I definitely to be proud of. So yeah, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. I'm, uh, yeah. You know, these, these people in this team, you know, lifelong friends, I've made a lot of lifelong friends from my career, but definitely this team, we, we really got a good connection and it shows in the work that we're producing. So mm -hmm. it sounds like it. And, and yeah. so congratulations on, on that. And thank you. And so I guess as we're talking about that for, for other leaders that are listening, um, wonder if you can maybe share some strategies or, you know, we've talked about sort of your three themes of resiliency, you know, your emotional stability and team impact. So I'm just wondering if there's any uh, strategies or tips that you would share that other people might benefit from as well. Um, for me, like I said earlier, taking care of myself knowing when I'm stressed, looking for the signs. I think, um, you know, I'm in a very high pressure, lots of work job. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was being consumed by it because I thought everything had to be done now and it doesn't. And, you know, I recognize that there's always going to be something in the inbox, no matter mm -hmm. how hard I work or, you know, how much time I, t I um, put in, how many hours I put in in a day, it's never going to be done. There's always going to be something so I started to, um, I, I created a, a wellness journal and a wellness plan for myself. And so at work, when I start, there's certain things that I do where I know that I'm getting stressed. One of them is rocking back and forth. Uh, you know, another one is grinding my teeth or gritting my teeth and um, my neck will get sore too. And so then I know mm -hmm. that I'm sitting sort of tightly. And so when these things start to happen, that's when I get up and I do some stretches and I go for a little walk, you know, um, talk to the commissioner or, or the team or, or something just to move away, take some deep breaths, do some stretching mm -hmm. and then get back to the job. So I think for me, that has been a really important piece to recognize that um, I can't do everything and I'm, I, I, I want to enjoy my day at the office. I like the work that I do, uh, <laughs> but if you're okay. racing through it and you're not enjoying it and being in the moment, which is really important, then, um, you know, you're, you're, you're wasting um, your time and uh, then what does your career become really? If yeah, you, you know what I mean, point. you know, yeah, yeah. I enjoy oh, the work. I'm hearing it sounds like uh, by by listening or paying attention for those kind of um, flags a little bit, you know, triggers or whatever you want to call it, tells or something, uh, mm -hmm. then you're able to address it before it gets bigger or, or goes on too long. Um, so that that definitely sounds sounds helpful. And then, like you said, then you're able to kind of almost reset to pull yourself out of that get back into your, you know, your present self and <laughs> come back so you can enjoy the work. And that's, that's really exciting to hear because you're in a, a fairly, uh, I don't quite, don't know quite the, what the word is, it prestigious role, <laughs> you know, it's, there's, there, it, you've got a big impact in the position that you're in. And uh, of course you want to do well in it. So, uh, mm -hmm. so it's great to hear that you found this way to almost kind of pull out of that you know, going almost in the off track a little bit and, and kind of get back on track there. Um, any other sort of uh, tips around kind of that resilience that other leaders you think would benefit from? Um, peer to peer conversations for me is important. Mm -hmm. You know, you and I have those conversations from time to time where I'm, um, I'm, you know, struggling with maybe a process or something that's not working well. And, you know, being able to, to reach out to colleagues in, in the same field for me too is really helpful because they can provide insights that I might not have thought of or been aware of. And mm -hmm. so, so that helps um, to keep me grounded as well. Sure. And to not feel like, like you're on your own with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. a good, good idea. Um, and so the emotional stability you've, you've kind of touched on, is there anything around that that would be uh, uh, anything else you'd want to add there? Um, well, you know, certainly I'm not above uh, reaching out to um, professional people when I'm struggling with, with mm -hmm. my emotional well-being. And I've made some phone calls just to, you know, um, assure myself that, you know, I'm okay. And that I'm, I'm coping in this environment too. I, like I mm -hmm. said, um, I, I always put other people first. I find I'm always very concerned. In fact, 
um, one of one of my team um, developed COVID and he sent me a test a text and he said, but don't worry about me. The, the vaccine is working fine. I feel pretty good. Aww, <laughs> but he said, you yeah. know, and so the, the don't worry about me. He knew that I was going to be worried about him. And, you know, I thought, well, that's, you know, that's who I am. <laughs> yeah. And because you so do, you care, care about your people. Yeah. And, yeah. and I can help that. That's who I am. But I can help, you know, um, if I need to reach out to somebody and talk to somebody about my coping strategies and to keep them going for another couple of years and, you know, on this level, because I don't think COVID's going away for mm -hmm. you know, the mm -hmm. next few years anyway. So we have to figure out how, how to adjust and cope. Absolutely. And, and I appreciate you bringing it up because it, it's something that I've, I've wanted to be uh, an ambassador for as well as, as a mental health and, and that it's okay to get help and, and mm -hmm. get supported and actually we probably should be getting supported. <laughs> you think about an, an athlete, they have a team of people that help them out. And, and I think of leaders as kind of brain athletes, but it, we're, we're emotional athletes as well, you know, having to go through emotional and brain challenges, um, you know, stressing our decision making, our, our relationships, our, you know, managing change, all of those types of things. And, mm -hmm. and so making sure that we're getting the support that we need uh, is, is so important. So I'm glad that you mentioned that. Yeah, and there's a lot to be said about a good night's sleep and some fresh air too. Those things mm -hmm. are really important to your mental health. Absolutely. And and sometimes <laughs> the easiest things to overlook. So exactly. Yeah, I, I know I have yeah. for a long time. Yeah. Well, thank you. So we're mm -hmm. kind of at sort of um, about the period, period of time that I was wanting to wrap up the conversation. But before we do, I'm just wondering if there's any final thoughts or any kind of last a message that you feel that people might benefit from hearing uh, as they're looking at bringing that kind of positive self-care and also that creating that team environment of being supporting and valuing their their members yeah i i think for me an open door policy really works you know with you know um with with all of my team they know they can come to me any any time and um i i'm just um yeah, I think taking care of myself first is really important. And then I can, um, you know, show up confident and, and they trust that. And then they know that I'm able to be there for them and represent them, you know, um, mm -hmm. in, in the department. So, yeah, it didn't come out as well as I hoped, but. Oh, yeah. that's great. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. And, you know, I'm just thinking about how bringing it back to the beginning about saying that trust piece. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, it would be hard to trust somebody if you felt like they weren't stable, you know, um, if I was the employee struggling with something and needing yes. help, you know, I wouldn't want to share it unless I felt like the person I was sharing with would be um, strong enough to be able to help be supporting, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. to be able to be that um, strong, reliable, trustworthy person for your team has, has created now this beautiful environment of support mm -hmm. and co collaboration mm -hmm. and even innovation, like you, you didn't mention exactly. here, but I know we've talked about that too, that yeah. it's allowed your, your team to kind of bring forward ideas and, and kind of mm -hmm. thrive despite the, the kind of the external situation we're in. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice to be able to, you know, give them the you know the lead go ahead figure it out you know show me what you've come up with and and trust them mm -hmm. you know you have to trust them and because we're all going to make mistakes but we're going to learn from them and we'll do better next time you know yeah bottom exactly. line. <laughs> yeah and that's how we how we all uh, grow and and expand yeah. for sure yeah well thank you I think that's a great way to kind of close the conversation today uh so Sharna I just want to say thank you for uh being here today, contributing your thoughts and wisdom to this summit, uh, oh, and also you, just for your friendship and, and you know, support through many years we've known each other. So yeah. thank you for being here for this today. It's been My very pleasure. special. Thank you, thank Sarah. You. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. I'm sure everybody listening will have gotten some nuggets and wisdom and some inspiration for them and their teams as well. So thanks so much. You're welcome.